And intro. By the way, people, every single item that I'm going to mention, Amazon carries. So there you go. Oh, greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries, and John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. What would you do if you were, let's say, at work or at a friend's house, and you were, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 miles away from home, and a disaster struck? I mean, you know, a hurricane, yeah, you get a lot of notice with a hurricane. But you don't get a lot of notice with a tornado. Suppose there was an earthquake, uh, you know, depending upon where you live. Suppose there was bridges washed out, you know, what would you do if uh, roads were impassable for some reason and you wanted to get home? What would you do? Well, I got some suggestions for you. Um, how to make a get home bag. So not in any specific particular order, but some things to consider. Now, a, a, a what they call a bug out bag or a get out of town, get out of Dodge bag for long term is totally different than a get home bag. All right. And I'm going to list some of these items that are in no particular order, but they can come in handy. Now, you got to consider where you live. If you live up in the Northeast and it's wintertime, I mean, you know, you're, it's going to be cold and you got to consider warm clothing, uh, which is going to be a lot different than, let's say, you are in Arizona or if you're in the mountains or what have you. You know, in Florida, you don't have to worry about winter coats too often. You know, there might be a couple weeks in the year might come in handy. But uh, yeah, but a get home bag, it has to be lightweight because you're going to be traveling and you don't want 50 pounds of gear on a woman that weighs 90 pounds. Uh, not good. No, you want to keep your bag under 20 pounds. Now, you could, one of the most important things you're going to need is water. And I strongly recommend for a get home bag, what's called a life straw. It is a small tube. It's about the size of a cigar. And, uh, I would have coffee filters, or at least a few of them. And what you could do is use the coffee filters to filter out, you know, any bugs or floating stuff or debris or whatever before it goes into the life straw. And the life straw will take out the bad stuff. Also, you could have a water bottle or a bag and purification tablets. Some people use iodine tablets. Others use chlorine dioxide. They'll all work. If you can, you could also boil water. And you don't need to boil water for long. Once it gets up to a full rolling boil, as they call it, uh, it's done. You don't have to boil it for five minutes, but it's got to be a complete total boil because uh, I think it's uh, anything above 180 degrees, any bacteria is dead. Of course, it's not going to help you if there are chemicals in the water. So that could be a problem. So that's what I kind of suggest. Uh, Nalgene makes a really nice 
one quart, one liter bottle. And then GSI Outdoors makes a stainless steel cup that you could take the Nalgene bottle and stick it inside of it. And the Nalgene bottles are pretty safe as far as I know for chemical wise. They don't leach, uh, was it HDPE or whatever it is. Not only that, they're almost indestructible. They really are. The only time I've ever broken one was when I filled it up to the brim with water, stuck it in the freezer and forgot about it. And it cracked. But I have dropped those things from three foot tall, uh, three foot high with water in them and they bounce. They're on concrete. On dirt, it'd be almost impossible to break them. Maybe on a rock. I don't know. All right. Uh, next thing I would suggest is a Mora knife, M-O-R-A. Uh, they're about $15. You can get stainless steel or carbon steel. If you lived in a wet environment, I would suggest stainless, but if you were out in the desert, uh, carbon steel works really nice. In the 70s, stainless steel knives were kind of junky, but they have perfected them. Uh, you can't go wrong with carbon steel, but carbon steel will rust. Next item, and these are not in any particular order, okay? Um, for a get home bag, there's a company called Light My Fire, L I G H T. Uh, no, we're not talking about the door song. Come on, baby, light my fire. Boy, I listened to that a few times, but uh, I digress. It's made in Sweden. I would get the military model. And uh, supposedly you could light thousands of fires with the thing. It is a type of, I think it's some kind of artificial element they make it out of. And when you scrape it with a piece of steel, and you got to make sure it works because some types of steel will not spark with the material. So you, you want to get a scraper that you know for a fact works. But these things will sh throw a shower of sparks and you get some dried out pine needles or maybe lint from the dryer, fluff it out, throw a couple sparks in it, you got a fire. And if it's freezing cold, well, it's good to have a fire. Let me tell you something. Before I had kids, before I got married, and uh, we used to leave, I, I used to live in Miami. We used to get out of Miami, go up to a place in Central Florida on the West Coast called Peace River. We would rent some Grumman uh, aircraft aluminum canoes, pack it full of stuff, food, drinks, beer, weed, whatever. Yeah, back in them days. It was the 70s, okay? And I'm not proud of it. Um, they would take you upstream, upstream about 20 miles, drop you off, and their uh, return point was right there on the river. And we would uh, take, you know, three-day weekend. We'd go canoeing and and uh, go camping. Well, one of the first times we did that uh, in Florida, well, all right, in the winter time is when we would go. We'd wait, make sure there was a good cold snap because it would kill mosquitoes. Well, then we would go camping because it's not too hot, you know, and mosquitoes were killed off with the cold. But the thing is with Florida, when you get a cold front move in, it would rain. Well, dumb us, or dumb me, uh, had everything in cloth bags. And uh, everything got wet. I mean, everything got wet. We got wet. Clothes got wet. We didn't have any dry clothes. Absolutely nothing. And it got cold. So it rained and it got cold. Well, we built 
a fire to stay warm. So, yeah, that's my little camping story. All right. Um, doesn't hurt to have matches. Do you know you can buy basically a thousand matches for, I think, about $15? You know, book matches, what you used to get with the uh, cigarettes. I don't smoke anymore, but uh, there was a time I did. But you can uh, get a couple of matchbooks, wrap them up in uh, saran wrap, keep them dry. But I strongly recommend Storm Matches. There's a company called Uco, U-C-O. They make Storm, mat storm Matches. They have about a 12 to 15 second burn time, or you can get their Titan Matches, which have about a 20 second burn time. You light these things, stick them in a glass of water, pull them out, it'll relight. These things will stay on fire until they burn out. They will start a fire. They, they're really good. Unbelievably good. Not that much money. You know, about $15. How about a little bit of food? You could have MREs, uh, military rations. They're in a plastic bag. You just cut them open. You don't have to get military. You can get uh, civilian MREs. Or you can get, uh, like Mountain House makes freeze-dried stuff that all you do is you add boiling water. You could have macaroni and cheese or, you know, whatever. Or protein bars, you know, like Kind Bars or what have you. Um, you could either, all right, next on the list, a water bag, or like I mentioned, the Nalgene bottle with the uh, purification tablets. Okay. Let's see. I mentioned the uh, GSI Outdoors stainless steel cup. You could use that to boil water. Uh, they are generally 12 to 18 ounces. You could also use it to warm up food. I would also have a poncho. You could use a poncho to keep you dry during uh, rain, of course. It can break the wind when there's a, when it's cold out. You could also use it to make a improvised shelter to sleep under, believe it or not, if it was raining. Um, I would also have some large garbage bags, like, uh, I don't know, 55 gallon. You could use those as a improvised sleeping bag. Uh, you could also use it, the, the poncho can be over your head and maybe you're from your waist and your head up and then have your legs in a garbage bag. Or you could use it as a ground cover in case there's the ground's wet. But uh, garbage bags come in handy. They really do. And I've used them as improvised uh, raincoats. So something to think about. Now you can get light ponchos or heavy ponchos. For a get-home bag, I'd get a light one. It only has to last for a few days. Now if you think this is crazy, ask the people in North Carolina about FEMA coming to rescue them. Uh, after the Hurricane Helene. Yeah. Now, you might want to consider rescue items. A signal mirror. Or perhaps a whistle. But uh, I would not... Uh, guarantee, I guarantee you I would not count on the uh, federal government to do anything for us. But hey... But then again, if you see somebody with a car running around and you need a ride, you know, you could signal them or what have you and, you know, offer them some money. And people, I would always carry at least $100 on you at all times, at least. And not big bills, you know, nothing larger than a 50, you know, 20s always works. 
Uh, but a whistle and signal mirror yeah, might come in handy. You never know. How about some extra socks and a shirt? You know, you want to have dry socks every day. And a shirt. You know, you could at least rotate them out. Let them air out overnight. Even if you can't wash them. Or you could wash them if you had a stream or a creek or whatever. How about some medications? Some first aid items. Now, how are you going to make a... Uh, a makeshift tent out of a poncho if you don't have some uh, paracord. I recommend 325 paracord. You don't need 550 paracord. You know that's for that's parachute cord. You don't need you don't need that. But you know it's thinner, it's lighter. Um, my suggestion is have the uh, the SAS Survival Guidebook by Wiseman. W-I-S-E-M-A-N. SAS stands for Strategic Air Services. It's the uh, UK equivalent of our uh, special forces. You know, people that are crazy enough to jump out of an airplane with a parachute. No, thank you. Uh, when I was in the Army, my captain, who I actually liked, Captain Holt, if I hope the Lord blessed you but for helping me all the things you did, but He's probably gone by now. He was quite a bit older than me. Well, not a lot, but he was probably 30 when I was 18. But uh, he was a paratrooper, jumped out of an airplane. Asked me if I wanted to jump out of an airplane. I said, you know what? I'm crazy, but I'm not that crazy. So how about a Bible? Wouldn't a Bible be handy to have? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I would have... A magnifying glass so you could read small print or you could use it to start a fire you never know how about a pair of tweezers that's why a Swiss Army knife is really handy to have uh, how about edible plants book with pictures there's a guy named James Cavanaugh k-a-v-a-n-a-g-h uh, he has books and fold out pamphlets that are laminated with pictures of plants. It's from Waterford Press. W-A-T-E-R-F-O-R-D Press. One of the best things you could ever have is a three-day survival pocket scout survival kit tin. Uh, there's a company called Best Glide as in they're uh, ASC, Aircraft Survival something or other. Uh, they specialized in survival equipment for aircraft. So, you know, if you're over in Alaska and your single engine plane dies, uh, you're trying to do the best glide down to the ground, right? But they have a military scout survival tin. Prices have gone up a little bit, but, you know, it used to be 42, now it's around fifty dollars it is the equivalent of a u.s pilot survival tin it's about uh it's not it's not an altoids tin no it's about four times the size of one of those if not bigger probably about the size of two packs of cigarettes it has it's basically a three-day survival pack it is the equivalent of the U.S. Air Force pilot's uh, parachute harness survival kit. Now, generally, a pilot has two of them. He has a large kit that I believe they sit on it. And when they do the injection seat, they have a large survival kit. It's about the size of a small briefcase. And it's got all kinds of stuff in it, uh, including signal flares and all kinds of stuff. But this is the parachute harness in case the other one gets lost. Uh, when you come down with your parachute, it's, it's in the harness. 
You just take your knife and you cut it out and you got a, basically it's a three-day kit. It's got all kinds of stuff in it. Look it up. Uh, people say it's real handy to have space blankets. Space blankets reflect your body heat. Uh, if you're in sub-freezing weather, sub-zero weather, you're going to be cold, but it might keep you alive, especially if you had several of them. They don't breathe. That's one of the problems with them. But another thing, too, is they, uh, they will, how would you say, infrared cameras look for, they look for heat. These things will block infrared cameras. Now, if you're in an entire area that's hot, they're going to be looking at a, and you've got one of these over you, they're going to be looking at a, a black spot in the middle of a white hot area with heat. So it won't be hard to tell that you're what you're doing. However, if you were under a tree, they would not see your body heat. So how about a compass and paper maps of the area that you're in? Oh, yeah. Trusted GPS. I've had GPSs give me wrong information. I don't trust them. I'm old school. I always have maps of the city I live in, the state. And when I travel, I got a map, a paper map. And I'm paying attention to what road I'm on or, or uh, yeah, highway, whatever. But a compass is handy, too. The uh, survival tin, military survival tin, has a button compass, so... Always good to have tinder to be able to light a fire. Like I mentioned, uh, you can use cotton balls. You can use lint from a dryer. Also, fire cubes come in handy. They make these things out of different things. Military used to have something called hexamine, H-E-X-A-M-I-N-E. -E. Um, sometimes they make them out of uh, sawdust and wax. They burn for five or ten minutes, long enough to help you get a wet, some wet sticks going with a fire. Because you got to realize, suppose there was it rained for three days or a week or a month, and then it quit and went cold and everything froze. How are you going to start a fire? You're not going to do a couple sparks and catch a log on fire. That's not going to happen. So, a fire cube or a candle, you know could come in handy. And of course, a lighter is real handy too. There's a thing called a silcock key, S-I-L-C-O-C-K. Uh, it is a type of tool. You, they use it for recessed valves, water valves, let's say at commercial buildings, schools, things of that nature. You got a, a spigot on the outside of a building, but there's no there's no handle or knob to turn the water on. But there is a a recessed type of valve. Uh, well, that's what the silcock key does. It'll let you get in there and turn it on. You might be able to get some water to refill your bag or bottle safe water to drink with a silcock key uh, a lot of schools you know you might have a a faucet there but they don't want people going and turning the faucet on and letting it run from over the weekend and then they get a bill for 25,000 gallons that you know just flooded out the school so they do not have a handle on the faucet and that's what a silcock key is comes in handy for. But not too many people know what that is. So a Leatherman multi-tool comes in handy too. You know, you may not need it. But uh, it's always good to have two or three ways to start a fire. A couple of knives. A couple of ways to have water. Collect water. Make sure it's safe. 
So, you know, uh, just in case, you know, there's a disaster. I mean, you know, if there was a, there could be a fire. Oh, it might not be a bad idea to have uh, some of those paper masks like uh, the COVID masks. Because you never know, there might be smoke. 9-11, uh, when the building came down, uh, there was dust in the air. You don't want to be breathing that stuff. So, you know, it might come in handy. Um, all right. If anybody else can think of any ideas of something I missed, let me know. Now, let me tell you something else. You're going to need a bag to carry all this stuff in. All right. You want something sturdy. Now, if you're trying to be hidden, all right, you might want something earth colored, like brown. All right. Green looks too tactical. Camouflage, too tactical. You don't want to be walking around looking like you're the military if there's a disaster. But brown is good. Black is good. Um, just a suggestion. You know, brown doesn't look like your military, whereas uh, army green does. Oh, uh, those fire cubes are also called fuel tablets. F-U-E-L. Uh, one thing, an advantage of using those, let's say you wanted to boil a cup of water because it was cold, so you could put some hot chocolate or something, coffee, whatever. Um, they are, military issue are generally, uh, you can't really see the flame and they're smokeless for the most part. They put out very little odor. And you got to realize something. When you're trying to get back home, are you trying to be seen or are you trying to stay hidden? During Hurricane Katrina, people in boats and rescuers were being robbed at gunpoint by the animals. And if you don't know what lives in New Orleans, well, yeah, diversity is our strength. It definitely is. If you believe, yeah. I mean, can you imagine that? You got a boat, you're trying to rescue people. They pull out a gun, tell you to get out of the boat, and they steal it. And they leave you stranded. So, uh, you know, definitely think about protection. One thing nice about a two, two, uh, I should say 22, as in age, right? is that they are quiet. Ladies, I suggest strongly recommend a revolver. I really do. Little five shot 38. You know, uh, everything on this list, minus the protection, you could probably get for about $300. Small price to pay. But, uh, if I was going to carry everything in town and try not to look suspicious, you know, they call it the gray man blending in, I'd probably get a, a, a school backpack. I think Stan Sport makes them. Uh, it looks like you're just a business commuter. So, and you should always be wearing something that could blend into your surroundings. Red, no go. You know, if you were in the woods, uh, brown is really good, you know. And it might not be a bad idea to have a change of clothes, you know, so that if you're in a city or town environment, you know, you don't look like you're G.I. Joe, you know blend in. But like I say, you got to decide, are you trying to be found or are you trying to stay hidden? And if you grab sticks off the ground and start a fire, it's going to put out a lot of smoke. You got to think about that. So it's better to grab dead, dead uh, branches off of trees 
high up that aren't waterlogged because the the steam from the water uh will give away your position so yeah that's sad about new orleans and katrina you know rescuers getting robbed murdered murdered you try to help animals and then they kill you really how stupid how stupid do you have to be you know I don't know, but uh, if anybody's interested in uh, training for what to get for protection, you know, you could always write me. Um, I was in the Army and uh, had a dad that taught me he was a World War II combat veteran. Unfortunately, he probably killed Germans. Well, I'm sure he did. Wasn't He wasn't proud of it, trust me. So he almost never talked about it. He'd rather forget it. He's gone now. Uh, the VA hospital killed him. Anybody's interested, I'll be, I'll let you know how. But all I know is stay away from doctors. Grandma was 99 years old. And I asked her, what's the secret of long life? She said, stay away from doctors. They'll fill you up with pills. Boy, I've taken that to heart. Uh, they'll take your money and take your life and your health. So unless I break a leg and you, you got to carry me to a hospital, I ain't going. Uh, this is just a few things to consider, you know. So, but I would definitely have some protection. Absolutely. Everything in, nowadays is dangerous. Especially in the cities now. it's Even the small towns are getting to be like this. So there's getting to be nowhere to run and nowhere to go, nowhere to hide. So something to think about, people. Now, if you're interested in long term, I might do another one. I did a survival series. So if anybody's interested, it's in my playlist on uh, YouTube. But this is just a get home bag. You want something light. Now, if you were thinking about Revelation 12 and the church in the wilderness, well, that's going to be long-term survival. That's when you, you need to carry a lot of different things. That'll be a whole different, whole different thing. So, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Jesus said, be as wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But he also said, buy a sword. He that hath no sword, let him sell his coat and buy one. Having a sword was more important to Jesus than a coat. And you know what? He lived in the time of the Romans. The Romans even let their people... Uh, carry swords. So what does that tell you? Yeah. All right. Take care.